Hello friends, welcome back to She's in Her Apron. Today we're gonna talk about what to prepare for for the month of July for our food storage and emergency planning. Thank you so much for coming back this month. I'm loving this series. The response has been amazing from you all, so thank you so, so much. So let's recap last month. For the month of June, we talked about grains, vitamins, and making bread. So if you wanna catch up on that video, I'll have it linked down below and the whole playlist for this series. For this month, the month of July, we're gonna talk about summer foods and canning. Now, even if you're not a big canner, there's so much information that I'm gonna be giving you and resources that you could go to to learn a little more about this subject, but definitely keep an open mind. I'm new at it. Every year I try something new with canning. I just think the thought is more scary than the actual process of doing it. So in a little while, I'll be sharing some canning videos as I'm learning and taking you guys along with me. The summer is a great month to stock up on things. And last month and the month before, we touched on buying condiments because this is the time of year when all that goes on sale. I think we think so much about long-term, but what are those go-to things that your kids go to all the time and snack on during the summer? And then get more of those to grow your pantry. If you start seeing big bags of chips going on sale, snag those. You have your camping trips, your get-togethers, your park days. You are making snacks and lunches a lot more right now. You'll see jello and pudding go on sale. I usually start buying that this time right now and closer to fall, Thanksgiving, when those sales recycle again because in the holidays they know you're baking and those sales are happening. So but keep an eye out for pudding, keep an eye out for jello. Uh, food bars, popcorn. Right now is a great time to stock up on those items. And also things like your relishes, your olives, pickles, any of your canned like roasted peppers and um, pepperoncinis, things like that. Keep your eyes on it because if you're building your pantry for your meals, and let's say you love to make Mississippi chicken or Mississippi pot roast, it's so good. I have recipes on that, links below. Um, keep an eye out for those pepperoncinis. And of course, jellies, jams, and honey. I go through a lot of honey in my house because I do use honey when baking bread. Sometimes I'll use sugar, but most of the time I put honey into it. My kids love putting honey on their cereal and they love making peanut butter and honey sandwiches. And also for a treat, they'll take a tortilla, flour tortilla, they'll put some honey and sprinkle some cinnamon and sugar in there and they'll microwave it just for a few seconds and it's a yummy, warm, sweet treat for them. Also, when I was looking through this month in my LDS preparedness manual, the link for this is down below, um, they were saying for this month, to stock up on peanut butter. That's a good protein that fills your belly. You can add that to pancakes. You can add that to smoothies. I'm doing okay with my peanut butter right now. Uh, I don't think I'm gonna go out and get any more, but I will definitely be keeping an eye on it because it is summer, the kids are home more, they go through the peanut butter. They also talk about this month wheat, but we covered that last month. But if you haven't stocked up on wheat, um, think about that. And then they talk about getting shortening. And I, I remember talking about this one month with you guys about shortening. And I was like, wow, that's a lot of shortening. We don't go through that much. Um, one can of Crisco shortening like lasts me almost a year until the end when I'm making a lot of my Italian Christmas cookies. Then I remembered when Texas was going through their cold spell, if you have a can of shortening, especially in a tin can, that can warm you up. That could be a source of light for you as well. And I was like, oh, that's really smart. I never even thought about it in that way. So maybe think about that. And they talk about dry milk and I talk about dry milk all the time. I'll leave a resource down below where I love getting our dry milk from. It's yummy, it's delicious. So that was from the LDS preparedness manual. And of course the link is down below. Okay, I'm gonna jump into canning. Like I said, I am not a pro at canning, but I love to try. This ball book here, I've had for a very long time, a very long time. I have made some really good jams and jellies from in here and butters, like pumpkin butter, apple butter. And this is where I really started to learn about canning and water bathing. And I haven't pressured canned. I pressured canned along with a family member, but personally on my own, I have it. And that is something that I want to learn how to do is pressure can. But I've also seen that you can pressure can a can, at least one, 
in your Instant Pot. So I'm very interested in learning more about that. I will try to find this on Amazon and link it for you. Also from The Ball Company, I have two other really big books. <laughs> I could not help myself. This is new. This one I just picked up at Costco probably about a month ago. And it's the all new Ball Book of Canning and Preserving. And this one is The Ball's Complete. Um, book of home preserving. There are so many good recipes in here, especially if you're doing a garden with the, your um, peppers, your tomatoes, um, onions. There's so many different ways to do salsa and then add fruit to them, ways of pickling things. It's fantastic. I am huge on freezing. I'm a big freezer girl. I will prepare things, throw them in the freezer and have them um, for the winter. I do have a video down below about how you can freeze your summer vegetables and have them all winter long. I encourage you just to take a gander at them and maybe it'll inspire you, especially if you're growing a garden and taking advantage of all that produce, ways that you could water bath, pressure, all of it. One other book I wanna share with you is The Prepper's Pantry. I did share this a long while ago with you, but it is so good. It is um, to help you build a nutritious stockpile to survive blizzards, blackouts, hurricanes, pandemics, economics collapse, and other disasters. There's a 35 menu plans in here, recipes and shopping lists. They talk about how you could build your pantry, which is huge, right? Which I encourage all the time here on my channel is building your pantry, how to keep it organized, tons of recipes, how to can. This is great if you're a newbie. It's a very easy read. The pictures are so informable. This is a fantastic resource. So I highly suggest this book if you're looking for a resource. Another great resource for you is A Year Without the Grocery Store. This is fantastic. This is by Karen Morris. This is her book and this is the companion workbook that goes with it to help you build up your pantry, keep track of everything, this is fantastic. I'll have this link for you down below. So if you're interested in canning, I like to do my canning outside. I have done it years in my home and it got my home very hot, especially in the summer and early fall. It would just heat up my house too much. And then I kind of ruined my stove in the first season or apron home, the original home. Um, the, the heat from the pot kind of made the backside of my oven a little rough. So I love using a propane stove outside. So if you're starting out and would like to do it but not in your home, may I suggest that you look into a propane stove. I think a propane stove is a perfect thing to have in your emergency essentials. Um, so if the power goes out, you are able to still cook a meal like outside for your family. I have one, I definitely think it's a must have um, if you're starting to um, start preparing and having emergency things on hand. If you are a canner, look over your cans and lids and see if you need to replace anything. Lids have been hard to find. You might have to buy more jars with the rings to get the lids. If you do find any online or Amazon, please be careful. Uh, my mother-in-law last year bought some she thought she was buying some ball lids, but when they came in, they weren't. They didn't look very good, and so um, just be careful what you're purchasing online. Walmart has um, a canning bath. Make sure that you grab your pinchers, their canning grabber. I don't even know what this is called, but to grab your cans out of the water bath, a funnel to pour things into it just makes the, um, the mess easier to maintain. So have these items on hand. They're very helpful. Again, you can find them in Walmart. You can actually find them at True Value um, and Home Depot, things like that. So keep your eyes out. Let's jump into water. Um, if you are already bringing in the water in every month, that's fantastic. Um, I tried to bring in four gallons of water every month. We do have big tanks of water. I want to always make sure that we have two weeks of water for everybody that in our home here and I store it in my daughter's closet. She's got a big closet and she doesn't need a lot of that room. So we've been using it to store our water. Now, if you store your water somewhere else, be mindful of how you're doing it. If it's on tile, I would suggest that you still put um, like a wood plank, if you could find it, a berry in between that and your water just because of the cement underneath. I don't know the whole science on it, but it is not good to store your jugs of water on the cement. So if you wanna start gathering gallons of water for the people in your family, 
Um, the source that I have says 14 gallons total per person to make a two week supply. All right, let's talk about money, having an emergency fund. Um, it's good to put some money away each month for an emergency. So you could do, and now this is according to your budget with your family, you could do $2 per person every month or every week uh, just to gain an emergency fund of money and, to, and put it somewhere safe to have on hand. Um, there, there are times when you might not be able to use your debit card. Um, again, an example is over the winter with what happened with Texas and they couldn't use their debit cards at a lot of the stores, so having that cash on hand is good. And for just your home storage, it's a good time to stock up on some toiletries, sunscreens on sale, tissues, toilet paper, and lotions. As another preparedness goal for your home, now is a good time to check on your smoke detectors, make sure your batteries are working good, how are the filters in your home. All right, friends, those are just some of the things to think about and prepare for for this month of July. I would love to know from you how you did last month. What did you stock up on? What were you preparing for? And then what do you think from what we talked about today that you're gonna concentrate on? So next month for August, we're gonna talk about fruits, vegetables, shelter and bedding so there's gonna be a flood of information for you so thank you so much for joining me I hope this encouraged you any tips tricks please leave them down below I'm gonna have a bunch of resources for you down below as well all right friends I hope you're doing good and we will see you soon bye